Well, thank you all for coming out. This is a Madison County Public Library uh, in <coughs> partnership with uh, Gallery on Main, Five Books. Today's guest is uh, Terry Gilslet. He's going to be giving a presentation on his production of books. So without further ado, Terry. County Library for five books and I've entitled Mind My Books, The Story and How My Books Evolved is sort of a subtitle. Uh, and this uh, quote down at the bottom is something I go by and I actually wrote. It's to dwell on life's disappointing moments is like taking a hammer and chisel and edging that moment into your memory. Instead, use the hammer and chisel to carve a new opportunity. Be sure to craft it well. But uh, I grew up in far western Kentucky, Missouri, Kentucky, and uh, had a car wreck when I was 18 years old and uh, changed my way of living. I always been big and strong, a boy that could get out and do whatever I wanted to, but uh, I uh, ended up having to learn to walk all over again. The doctors didn't think I would. And, the only thing they got right was that I'd be in pain for the rest of my life. And so, uh, so young then, I couldn't, and I, for two and a half after I learned to walk, I went back to work because school, I just couldn't concentrate and get through school at the time. And then after 25 years, my leg was broken down so much over the previous four to five years that I was off work more than I was at work. So the doctors put me on disability and I went, ended up going back to school. Actually moved up here to Richmond, Kentucky to go to Eastern, moved in with a sister of mine. And I got through school and had a general studies degree and that was the uh, fall of December 2009 that I graduated. And uh, long about January and February, it was like I knew I was wanting to go to learn something in the art world to do. And uh, I've been taking a lot of sculpture classes and one of my teachers had told me about sculptural books. So I found some, a class that was gonna be at Aramont School. And that summer I went and did a whole bunch of work study at Aramont and took a sculptural book class from a man named Dan Essie. And uh, it's been eight years now nearly to the day since I got out of that class, probably because it was the first week, last week of June and the first week of July in 2010. So Sunday would have been the last, this Sunday today would probably be the day after my last day of that class. So it's been eight years. And I've just, books just seem to have fit me and this has given me the opportunity to really look back and figure out why which I knew some of them, I've thought about them all along, about why to, I like the form of sculptural books. But I do make uh, some normal type books that are sort of square, that one, and uh, been, which are up there in all different sizes. They can be used for journals, sketchbooks, any type of book you want. But basically, I do use what's called a four needle Coptic. Coptic binding is one of the oldest, and it's a chain link binding, and most of it uh, dates back to the second century. The Christian cops would learn to make their books like this to put their gospels together and their prayer books together. And uh, the, some of the oldest ones date back to the second century. The nicest one in existence, they say, is about from 600 and something. And a lot of times they would cover with leather, the wood and stuff, but the wood to me, it just speaks about the grain. And we're, we're ingrained with stuff growing up and then we learn different things as we grow. So the grain of the wood sort of speaks to that. And a lot of the time, most of the wood I use has been thrown out or neglected or thrown away. 
And uh, that goes back to my wreck when I was pushed to the side and didn't think that there was anything that the emergency room could do for me until another got, doctor got there. So I think that probably is why I like the different type woods. And this and this piece is an example. I'm getting a book ready done with that. I haven't got it done yet. Sometimes it takes me a while working through to figure out exactly how. But this book, if you, it's just for a wood turner carved extra pieces or cut extra pieces off of a bowl blank and get it sort of bowl shaped before he put it on his blade and he had them laying around him and I asked him what he was going to do with them. He said, I'm going to put them in my fire and burn them sometime. And I said, well, do you really need them for your fire? He said, no, not really. Do you need them? And, and they were, this was probably had two or three more that I, when I cut it down and resawed it into boards, I probably had four out boards out of that one. And then he had the, and that one, the reason most people, it's set in a shop where I sell up there in Murray, and most people will set it back down like that because the bigger base, they think the bigger base, but I made it to where it will set like this because the top of the story, the, per the story is still trying to reach and fulfill itself and fill itself out. And uh, so that's why that, those two boards actually brought out in me was thinking that the stories you now growing, we're always learning no matter what we do. And then uh, there's a, this front piece here that's in this picture, it's actually the same wood as this. It's got the red running through it that actually runs through it. It's box elder from a box elder tree. And that red is actually, they say, from a fungus that grows. Some people say it's from a fungus that grows on the ground and causes it to be the tree to be diseased. But there's other people say it's a symbiotic relationship from the fungus and the tree. And it, that's why the wood is more beautiful than just one that doesn't have the fungus on it. And uh, it really spoke to me when I seen it and never. They're really odd pieces, and I'll, you'll see some more in my slideshow here. It doesn't fit. A lot of people wouldn't think it's book shaped, and they, and when I get them made, they well, it does make a book, but people, you know, look at them. They do make books, but they wouldn't have thought it when I first picked up the wood. And for some reason, the books, and I think it's the story jumping out at me, and like the one with the knot, it's, I really like the pieces that, I'm not sure if that one is the one, but there was two pieces with that knot in it, and there was, I made them, used them for two different covers. One of them was actually broke, because it, the knot was so big in it, and I glued them back together. A lot of times I'll do that. Pieces that break off, I'll glue them back together, and I'll let them see, you know, where uh, somebody doing fine woodwork for a table or something will make sure where he glued it is not seen but I do not mind that it's seen because that is part of the, that book story. And I'll work with them for a long time. You know, sometimes the, I'll have the wood around for a while before I decide how I'm going to use it. And uh, this next one is, which you can see the binding there more, the, it's a four needle Coptic. Most of the time the Coptic is just a one needle chain, but I use the four needle, which I can, uh, have two different colored threads and you can see where the threads link together and they make a more beautiful chain. So it's, you know, holding the story together more beautifully. And the back-to-back, -back, or do -si do is the actual French name for these books because they're back-to-back -back and their story opens one way and story opens another. And uh, so they're good for partnerships or a lot of people will, would like to, would like these for a marriage wedding gift, but I also have made them for their three books, back to back to back. Two of them open the same way. Well, I always think of those as the, two, the couple that's getting married, their lives outside of the marriage, or before the marriage, either one. And then the inner one is them 
getting married and then the end bands that I put on them are more of a decorative. There wasn't, they weren't on many of the books back centuries ago, but they, because they take so long, but uh, that's the family, the spiritual of that couple holding their lives together. So that's why I sort of like the back to back and actually this one that I showed you, it will not be a back to back, it will sort of be a back to back because it's gonna be all bound on the same side because of the way the wood dictated. And uh, I've made a larger one of these. And the uh, thing about this one, when I get it done, it's gonna be like that other one I talked about. Everybody's gonna to wanna to sit it down like that or like that. But for it to go together, to me, it will be, it will sit like that and it will have a little rock to it. If you, I don't know, after I get it done, I'm hoping it will sit like this, but we'll have to wait and see after it gets bound. But, uh, and that's, you know, it's just the story goes through. This is a, back-to-back -back book and there's actually a back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. There are two of these that uh, one's a back-to-back -back and the other one's a back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. I got three pieces of wood out of that block. It was a block that I found and uh, the parts of it, which this edge right there were over on this very far corner here sort of see where there's a knot that was in it. Well, the piece broke off as soon as I resawed the board down. Well, I've got a Band-Aid on there and I've got it sewn together and I've got it glued together a little bit. But, you know, we, I have been taking, you know, I fell apart and broke myself apart and that's a lot of people have in their lifetime. And that's part of our story, you know. And, uh, a lot of times I used to wear braces, which caused my more back trouble and everybody, I didn't mind that I wore shorts. Everybody said, well, why don't you wear pants? Nobody would see the brace. Like, I don't care that they see the brace, that they know it's there. Why, why does that matter? You know, because we're all have problems and things and ain't no use in hiding it. Yeah, I walk with a lamp so they can see. You. So there's no difference in all of us. We've all got it and that's some of why I use these different type of woods is because uh, they help to show the story. And this was actually one for a friend that, uh, and to, it's not set and funny, it is actually sloped at the top like that because that's the way the piece of wood was. And uh, she came in and was looking at all my different, she said, I don't want a big one. She had three daughters and I did, two of them had gotten married. One of them had gotten married long before I was making books. And I've made big books. One of them will come up here in a minute for the other two girls, and she wanted something for this girl. And she come in and looked at the different wood, and she found that board, and I had to, I got one that sort of matched and had to cut it to that shape. So it's the front and back are the same shape, whereas sometimes I make them where they're not. But, uh, and that's what, and uh, just, I usually do not make closures for them because I don't know, I like trying, thinking that the story of that book is done with. If I put a clasp or a tie it shut, which I, have, I do make some because it just calls for it sometimes, and she wanted that, and that's, and uh, so it's a, really a family book for her, that one girl, and, uh, but that's what I, you know, the higher slope at the top, and then it just, sort of fades off to the right. Because I was wanting to make it the opposite way, but it just didn't work that way. It wouldn't go where the story was growing. So uh, I just made it that way. And it turned out to be a beautiful book. And uh, so the next one is more of that box elder wood. And that's just some different, a different chunk. He had, he'd actually ran across a bunch. You don't come across much of it. But this is one I'd want to use as an example of how my, you know, about the difference, how we're different in uh, 
it's got the knot at the top, and I had to figure out how to make this book because this top part, actually where the thread comes, you first see the thread, that is where the text block is, and all that other goes out past where the book actually is. And then it has the knot, and I've done a few others, and I call these worn or something like that, different names, because we have places on us that are worn, or like this one, it was maybe pecked at, pecked at, and so it goes down into the text block. And uh, so then this next piece, that's just that corner of that other book, and it actually broke when I was trying to make the book, and uh, that's where it's glued together, and as I said, a lot of people most fine woodworkers look at it, and I was actually not let into a show because something like that showed, and I said, they said, you're woodworking. I said, I'm not a woodworker, I'm a bookbinder. And it's an art show, it's not about the craftsmanship of the wood, and, but, they, but that was why, because something like that was showing, but it, even that one, when you look at it, it looks like two eyes and with a tear or something, you know. It, the book had a whole problem there, but it's been healed and fixed. And uh, so there's the binding to it. And that's, you can sort of see the four needle and how the two different colors will combine to make the chain length. And there, uh, actually on that one side, I forgot about that, I added a little bit because the holes didn't quite match up, some of the holes, and I wanted to make sure it held in that one point. But one of the most fun things I've done since I've been in uh, back in Murray is there's a BSA, very special artist, but it's a bigger name, but it's a, for the special needs kids of uh, the state of Kentucky, and they have what's called a side-by-side -side workshop and exhibition, and uh, these next couple of books are two that came from that. That was a 18-year-old boy that drew this story, and it was about uh, he came in, we worked together for an hour, and that's what he drew was this story, and it's a Native Americans and uh, being run off from their place. It was a blind girl, and uh, her brother was deaf, and they were, he was showing how they communicated through there, and this was the book I created. It's a, just a accordion-style book that put everything, comes, works in the accordion style, and but that was so much fun just to see his work and his enthusiasm. And then just this past year, and this book is actually, this <coughs> book, this book, it's a Lego book. You can't really see the book part of it, but those are the two covers, and you can sort of see the thread in the middle where they, uh, where I bound them together. A little 10-year-old autistic boy, uh, and when I was assigned him, I'd worked with the workshop was for four, four weeks, and uh, the art, uh, director of the art field told me who I'd, uh, she wanted to assign would be if that'd be okay. I was like, well, yeah, it's okay. And I went, and he has a caregiver that's always with him, and I talked to her, and she says he's got tons of Legos and loves Legos. And I went and got some uh, the Lego bases, and uh, the art field said they had some a couple of containers of old Legos that they had for some projects and that had been, didn't need to be used. So uh, we got those out and he made all of these except for that shark. And that shark actually, I got the directions out of this little packet and I made that. And it and all the other stuff he made without even having directions or anything and made them, probably was making made most of it by the time I got that chart made myself. <laughs> He's a very smart boy and it was more rewarding just to see him and be around him and see their those kids' enthusiasm towards it. Even though they've got hardships in life, he would never know it by how they go with something. So just being an artist that really enriched me just to see that and be around that. The first time I'd ever got, done it, I was so scared because I'd never worked with a special needs child before, but I've done it for five or six years now, and it's just gotten more, got easier to do, and 
for me, but it's more rewarding every year. It just surprises me every year what the these kids will do and come up with. But as I was saying, sometimes the boards are not the same. These are actually the wood is all the same front and back board, but uh, it was some broken pieces. And sometimes I cut the paper just to make the text block and cut it where it smooths away and uh, meets from the front to the back. Because sometimes that's what, what we have to do. We have to make our make something work. And we, uh, it's what I'm usually going for with this when I'm doing this is because the story may not going to meet up, but we have to either make it work or just give up. And giving up, you know, was never been much of an option for me. Uh, I've had to maybe not do some of the stuff I used to do in the past, but I found other ways to make things work. And that's what, uh, that's why I use boards like this. And, uh, you know, I have worked with some leather, but uh, this was really nice leather that uh, I had that was actually on the other two wedding books that I had for the lady that uh, we got uh, wanted the other book that I had and I didn't want to use it on any other books because I just wanted those two books they were I'll show you in a minute they were done different than this so I'll make these into some soft leather covers and I had some old uh, upholstery leather that was like a sample I'd gotten and that's what the green is and I just sort of Frankenstein it together and sewed it up and stitched it and, uh, See here better on the back side when that's actually the leather you're supposed to see from the upholstery of the green, the dark green, but I showed the suede side, the inside, because it just went better with that uh, leather. But this next one, this is a quarter leather covered, and it's probably three quarter, nearly two thirds to three quarter inch thick wood slabs that I found that were just thrown out and was going to probably get burnt, but I seen that night, and I just couldn't leave it there. So, uh, and then I'd gotten the leather, and I put this one together, and then the lady bought it for her daughter who was getting married, and requisitioned another one, which I, found, I had some, some more of that wood that was similar, but it didn't have the knot, and I just made her another one very similar to it without, the juice didn't have the knot in it for the other knot. And, uh, but it's sort of like uh, that other one I talked about where you have to make the paper work to fit. And then you can see I, that's a, my take on a 15th century binding where they uh, quarter leather covered them and uh, everything. So I do do some of that, but it's not something I do all the time because it's a, it's glue and which is fun and all, but to really do it right, you need a lot of specific equipment. If you're going to do it a lot to do it right, and I don't have that equipment, and I just enjoy using the needles, helping to tell the story. And uh, these next ones I'm showing actually came out of that one because I, I got a commission from a lady. The leather is actually her father killed this deer back in the late 70s and the hide and she after he passed away she'd gotten it and had it for years and didn't know what she wanted to do with it she seen that other book and she wanted me to make three one for each of her two sisters and one for her mother and uh, I asked her if she wanted four because she needed one she said no she would get her mother to she passed so she only needed three and she still got quite a bit of the leather left but that's uh, she went through the boards and the wood I, I had, and we found this, and they, instead of having it make it meet up, she wanted this back wood and sap wood of this back wood to show, so that's the way they were done, and sort of Frankenstein inside, and she, uh, I was working one day, and I had another book that I don't have a picture 
picture here with the hit the cords that are it's bound to came out like this and actually went all around the board and I painted them and colored them. She said, well, I want that, but I don't want them painted and colored. I, and I only want them to come out a little bit. So that was her wants. And then I just used the leather and tried to use side pieces for where, off of one side before I didn't mess up too much of the hide because she's wanting as much back as she could get. And then there's another picture of that same one. And then, uh, well, there's the two together that but there's two different ones of them, and you can see it that on that top one how the, it was just cut straight the text block, and that way it shows the edge of the wood and the backboard more. But the uh, first sculptural book when I had a show, uh, I had this piece of wood. The show was in 2015, and I probably got the piece of wood in 2010 or 2011 at Arrow. And I had it sitting around. I grabbed it one day and it was just a piece of poplar wood that somebody, it was come out of a furniture class. And after all the classes that year, wood classes, I'd go to the scrap bin. Well, this was in the scrap bin, you know. Whatever's in there, you could grab. So I grabbed it, I drilled a bunch of holes in it, was gonna do that, my Coptic chain. And that's where it's all bound now. And, uh, and this one, will, that one shows it better. But all them holes to where it's got the X, X is where it's bound. And, I, and when, as soon as I got it drilled and was looking at it, well, how am I gonna hang this paper from it? And I was, knew that chain wasn't gonna work because I was gonna scar that wood to pieces. And I didn't wanna do that. So it set for a year or two, and I come up with putting the end bands on it. And then it, set for another year, I think, and I put the centipede binding, which is what this blue is. It runs down the side. And uh, so this is a piece that has evolved and it's really still evolving. One day, right before this show, I was trying to come up with books and I moved something and that piece of wood was under it. And it just hit me how to bind it. And I just, and the, as you can see from before, the it was meant to hang like this when I first made it. it. The first few times I showed it, it hung like that. And then I had a show for a sale, and it was, I had it, and I was like, well, how am I gonna show it? And I laid it down, well, that looks pretty good, so I showed it that way a few times. Then that was 2015 when that show opened, at that show opened. And last year in 2017 in October, I was at, it's called Handmade and Bound, and it goes in junction with the Southern Festival of Books in Nashville. And it's a bunch of different booksellers and printmakers, and I've done it for, I think that was the fourth year, fourth or fifth year. And uh, I had it laid up in the front, sort of like that, it, I showed it. And this boy come up and picked it up, and his mother was probably 10 foot. I told you not to touch anything. Well, he set it back down. And I've always called the book Bridge Over Cripple Creek because I call my books Cripple Creek Book Arts, my book business. And when I looked at it, I seen water for the first time under that bridge. And I was like it took a 10 to 12 year old little boy to show me how else I could display this book. Because, you know it shows more of a flow of water and then uh, I have also put it on books or a block to show it like that and that sort of slow shows flow but I played with it for a minute after he left and I found that and that really shows water more but it's just goes to show this book I've had it for seven or eight years this piece of wood and it's taken me and I'm still learning about it and it's the story is still getting added to it. And that's sort of what keeps me going with the books is, is the wood can look a lot similar, but it will keep me, you know, it's still showing different ways of being made and everything. And then here was, well, from that same show last year, it's uh, the 
box elder book, and that one is the one that was in front of the one picture of all the other books. But it, they're all uh, actually pretty close to the same piece of wood. Uh, wood. These six pieces, I think, came out the same, or these four and these four white loads, but he's got more of an edge. But it's just the veins and nose. And so it's still carrying me through to, and up there you can't see the red too well, but the dark streaks in them is the red. But what this one has. But to go back to this, to dwell upon life's disappointing moments is like taking a hammer and chisel and etch those moments deeply into our memory. Instead, use that hammer and chisel to carve a new opportunity, craft it well. I wrote that on February 19th, 2010, and that day is the day I started applying for Aramont Finland and to go on this journey. So I go back to this quote when I'm having problems or something, you know, worrying about things or thinking about things, I have to go back to my own quote here to get myself straightened back up and hit it, making, to just to go make something, because sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'll go in and pick up something and start making, and it may not end up being that, but I'll end up finding it get back into the groove of my So, and it's really helped me to get back into life to where I wasn't just on the couch because a lot of, some people found out when I first went on disability, and, oh, you can stay home and watch TV. And I, thought, mm -hmm. and I don't mind watching some TV, but not just all the time for the rest of my life. I was only 43 years old at the time. So I just didn't want to sit there and waste away on this has led to this, and the disability led to school, and school led to this, and this has led me on for the next eight years, hopefully farther. off the wood, uh, what materials do you use to finish the wood? Or? Well, I'll, I'll sand it, and uh, like this, what's showing there is my background, but it's, I may have to resaw the piece down or sand it, and most of the time it's sanding, and then I will use a clear, either wax or butcher block wall, a lot of times is what I use, because it's being handled a lot, Sometimes I'll use polyurethane and give it a big thick polyurethane finish, but if you use the butcher block, you can feel the grain, everything of the wood, and when you interact with it, you can really feel the texture. As I said, the grain of the wood, it feels like an object that you can relate to. In the, uh, in the books where you have uh, the large knots, or some of them I noticed look like they had been filled with a resin of some kind? Uh, that one, uh, I'm thinking of the one you're talking about, I actually had a thin layer of uh, plywood, and I painted it a real deep purple. Was it a sort of a purple look? Yeah, that's, the one yeah, that's what that was. It didn't have any. And I've explored, and I'm going to look into doing some of that with the resin. I've seen some stuff where they've done that. I'm going to look into maybe doing some books with that. Yeah, I've, that I, I've, I've seen a number of tables made that way, and yeah, what I've heard is that it adds structural stability as well. Yeah, that's what I've heard, and as I said, sometimes I have to glue stuff back together and maybe sew it and everything, so I was going to look into that for maybe some of the next wood I find that needs some stability, stabilizing. Have you ever thought about doing pens with them? Uh, never thought about pens, but uh, pens, ink pens, ink pens. 
actually somebody talked, and I thought about it at one time. There's a lady there at our art guild that makes pens and uh, sells them. You know, she turns the pens and all. And I do with the leather ones. I'll put a pencil. But I, of course, I buy the pencil. Yeah. And but I've never thought about. And I need probably. I took a turning class once, and it was too hard on me. But I was taking. We were turning great big balls. It was actually broke one of my braces standing there uh -huh. vibrating all day long. And uh, so I never had been back to turning, but I did watch a gentleman doing some turning recently with the little bitty lays that he was turning stuff that was that size. So I may have to look into it. Well, I love journals. And when I was looking at your, I mean, I've got so many journals, it's not even, and I have, you know, I've gotten some down at the Berea Art Fair and the nice leather ones, and I don't have a wooden one. But I was even thinking about your back-to-back -back book yeah. would be a cool journal, too, like yeah. one year, two year, or just to make little yeah. notes in or whatever. Yeah. But, um, but no, they're really beautiful. But a pen would be cool, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, made out of the same type of wood or something. Yeah, that would be... I may look into that in the future. I have to learn to do that. So. I, I don't... Uh, I'd like to see you do that chain. Is that a braiding process? <laughs> it's similar to braiding, sort of, but it's more... I watched an em, some, a lady embroidery the other day, and I was like, well, it's sort of like embroidery. But it's, they call it binding, but I have always think of myself as I'm sewing, because I'm going in and out of the book, and then I go around to make the chain look. And I do, a, when I'm sitting at shows and stuff, I am working that. I, I don't really explain it too well, but you can watch and see how I'm, I can show you a little bit about how I'm, I was hoping to have a workshop <coughs> next weekend in Nashville, but it didn't make. But hopefully, we will be getting something like that set up to where I can show people. But it is, it's because I tell people I'm sewing, but or people come up and think I'm sewing because they see the needles I use. Because they use a, it's called a number six darning needle, which is bigger than what most people use. On books, but it just fits my hands better, my procedure, I guess, better. And so sometimes I say I'm binding, sometimes I'm saying sewing, so, but, and as I said, some, it even looked like the way the lady was embroidering the other day, I was doing some of the same stuff when I was going in and out of the woods. I have to drill the holes for the, they call them, ton, the man I learned from called them tunnels, because you see that goes in the end of it and it comes out the top goes around into the inside of it. It looks like you have three colors of fiber on this side of the book, the side close to you and the side foreground. Right? Well, the end bands are the same as the, uh, the lighter color that's within the four bound that's in the chain in there. That should be in it, but it does, I think, the way that it's lit and everything does make it look like there's different colors in there. Okay, now I see the chain. Before I couldn't see the chain. I guess you need one of those lights to flash yeah, and show. Yeah. But yeah, now I see the chain. Yeah, okay. See what I'm talking about the, well, um, actually, this actually changes yeah. too. Yeah. But then you've got the chain here where the different colors are changing around each other. And if you come up here after we're done, you can see the, see it a little better here. And then this one is done, it's just it's a single needle, so it's all the same color and it will look more like a chain. Thank you. You make your own paper? Uh, I learned to make more paper my own paper, but with my back and legs the way they are, that's a very strenuous job to do it enough to make my own paper enough for my books. So okay. I, if I ever did some, a lot of the paper, I've still got some of it around, it's the decorative paper I use. Uh, but uh, most of the time, I, anymore, I'm buying it. I've thought about taking the workshop because I can get 
they were like a bunch. Uh, you know, I already know how to do it. So there was some people in the workshop I was in that went in. I already knew how to do it. So I'd take a workshop every year or two and but just go in and make a bunch, go in production mode, and make a bunch during that week, and mm -hmm. have it for a while. Like, okay, I think when I can afford to do that, mm -hmm. not do work study, because I was doing work study. Didn't get as much done as what you know, I was doing a barter system to get to learn all of it that I learned. But I did go and take some dyeing classes and some marbling classes, and I do know I have marbled some wood before or some paper and stuff, and that's an intensive process. So just my disabilities just don't allow me to do that many different things. Okay. Well, Terry, thank you very much for coming out and thank you. giving this presentation for us. Get around and call Terry.